this podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the U.S. and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Garav Kushik. Garav is the co-founder, president, and COO at Science.io. Garav, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm glad to be here today, JP. Oh, we're delighted to have you. So, Garav, let's start with yourself. Can you give us a, a brief background of your journey in technology from where you got started, some of the roles that you held along the way, taking us up to uh, the formation of Science.io? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so in terms of my training, I studied physics and biomedical engineering in undergrad, and I did my PhD in bioengineering at UC San Diego, and then I did a postdoc at Harvard Medical School, so your classic academic career. And throughout that career, I was really motivated by creating new analytical methods and tools that accelerated the work that the lab that I was in was doing. And so when I made the, the transition to industry, I really wanted to stay on the same kind of mission to build tools that empower uh, others, but across the entire healthcare industry. And in 2017, I became the Associate Director of Real World Data at Foundation Medicine, a cancer diagnostics company headquartered here in Boston. And my team was working with another company called Flatiron Health, a cancer electronic health records company in New York, to understand how the mutations in cancer patients' tumors correlated to their health outcomes. And what we were able to do by linking the data between our two organizations was understand how a patient's precise biomarkers actually informed their health and potential treatment options. And we learned an incredible amount. For example, we did an analysis that suggested that patients who had a triple negative breast cancer, a harsh form of cancer that particularly affects women of color, responds well to certain kinds of therapies. And that was pretty novel for the time that we were making those observations. Connecting disparate patient data was really enabling for us to find potential new therapies and treatment plans for patients that weren't yet being introduced in the clinic or in clinical trials pipelines. And it made me wonder, who else are we missing? What if we could do a deep analysis at scale for every patient in the healthcare system? It takes a tremendous amount of time to gather data today. What could we do to be able to do this for millions, if not billions of people? So Science Diet was founded out of that inspiration. Yeah, I was to just going to, to I was just gonna ask, and sorry for interjecting. Thank you yeah, for the, the, the background. I was just gonna ask, where did you see the early science for the idea behind science IO? But you've already set the foundation. So my next question would be tell us all about science IO. What is the mission of the organization? What are you guys doing with this data? And then we can jump into what role data science and AI plays in helping you achieve that mission. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the big limiter here in healthcare is that. Healthcare is really optimized for manual labor. 80% of the data is unstructured, meaning it's just free text that somebody has to read in order to understand what is going on with a patient and to communicate it with others, to drive the patient's treatment forward. And our goal here at Science.io is to transform how we work with that data so that we can tell more patient stories and ultimately improve patient outcomes and drive down the cost of the healthcare. We want everyone to be able to learn from every relevant data point in healthcare. So the way that we work with artificial intelligence is to use it to take unstructured data and turn it into structured data that is ready for search and analysis. That's our core function right now. That's our core mission. Excellent. So you launched the business uh, from what I can see was the beginning of, of 2019 and we're coming up to the, the three-year anniversary mark at the end of this year. Can you walk us through what the, that journey has been like from concept to getting your first few hires to working with your first data sets and some of the challenges along the way, but then some of the milestone successes you've had? So I, th I think the crux of every single AI 
focused business or every, every business is trying to focus on artificial intelligence to solve a critical business need is you really have to start with strong data. And what we care about here is building artificial intelligence that is purpose-built for healthcare, that is designed to solve the specific and peculiar challenges in healthcare. And so when we started, we had a few design principles that we used that we still abide by. And the first is that we don't repurpose AI trained on non-healthcare data. If it's trained on social media data or other kinds of data, we can't expect it to thrive in real world clinical use cases. So since our founding, we've put a lot of emphasis on really high quality training data because every good AI application starts with good data. And the other big piece that we focused on is treating each algorithm like it's a product. And by that, it should be designed with the user's needs and experience first. So we started off with those two principles and where that led us was developing an artificial intelligence that in real time can identify over 9 million healthcare concepts in unstructured data. That means every medical condition, device, procedure, therapy, gene, mutation, so on. And moreover, link the text to a unique identifier, which means that when you have the output of that algorithm, all the data is normalized and ready to go. And we went even further and said, let's serve this up with a simple API and a Python client. No need for complex workflows or generating hundreds or thousands of lines of code to build your own industrial grade NLP workflow. You can use Science.io in just a few lines of code. And yeah, with that algorithm and with that technology, we're now working with healthcare professionals and payers to design workflows, help drive better decision-making and ultimately help improve patient outcomes. So on that, fo- on that final point, you're now having a lot of success with different healthcare providers and, and people who can use this data in real time. Can you give us a, an example of what that means to the end user, a, a typical project where they would be utilizing Science IO's platform, what the objective is and, and what it means on the back end with the results that they can get? So because most of the data in healthcare is unstructured, your core workflow, whether you're working from clinical trial records or patient data in the EHR or insurance claims is is almost basically the same. You go to where the data is, you read it, you parse it, you try to structure it in some way where it's ready for an analysis. And then that could be a period of days to weeks to months we've seen. Then you can actually start to do the analyses that matter. So one of our partners, for example, wanted to understand how the clinical trial landscape looked for patients with breast cancer. And normally that would require them to spend months actually going through all the public records on those trials and organizing all of the information that described which patients were getting into these clinical trials. And we work with them to make that data useful in a few hours by running it through our API, getting that structured data in real time, and then being able to do really precise queries and analyses on that. So that core workflow is something that I think is pretty abundant throughout the healthcare industry. And it is a a perfect place for us to bring artificial intelligence to customers and empower them to work better and faster on achieving the goals that they're out to achieve. You are listening to the oldest podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. Staying on customer type before we move on to uh, the team and and the engineering behind all of this. Obviously, the first few years of any startup, a lot of it has been getting 
about a lot of it has been about getting your name out there and getting these connections with potential customers. Gaurav, before we started the interview, you were telling me about some of the recent media attention that Science.io has been getting due to the early success. Please do tell us all about that. What sort of attention is this getting and who's paying attention to what you're doing? Yeah. So as we're speaking today, we officially launched uh, and announced that we raised $8 million in seed funding which we plan on using to expand our team, our investment in healthcare AI, and to launch new products over the next six to 12 months. <clears throat> We've already hired four additional members of the team during the pandemic, including our chief commercial officer, Chuck Smolke, who just joined us from Optum. And we're looking to grow further in engineering product and commercial teams. And in terms of product milestones, we're really excited about our API, which gives access to our artificial intelligence for real-time data processing. And that's going to be rolling out into an early access program by the end of the year. So you you touched on it there, and congratulations on, on the round of funding. So with that, there's going to be an acceleration of growth for the business, and you're going to need to bring in more, more people to help you guys continue on this mission. Focusing on the, the data science and the engineering team, can you give us some insight into what opportunities there are going to be for people who are passionate about this mission and already operating in this space? What types of hires are you going to need to make over the next 12 months? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a huge opportunity for folks to join on the machine learning side to learn how to build industrial scale AI products from tail to tip, from getting data sets to scaling up labeling, quality control, benchmarking, measuring bias, to training models in a reproducible way, to making them available through endpoints like an API, but also integration into software products. There is a lot of opportunity, whether you're a data engineer or an R&D engineer focused on deep learning, or just somebody who's worked in uh, software engineering and is interested in seeing how we can make an impact in healthcare with machine learning. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity there. And then from the data science perspective, we care a lot about knowing what is going in our algorithms and understanding how our algorithms behave. And so there's a lot of opportunity for data scientists to help construct experiments with artificial intelligence and to pull back the curtain on how this AI works and how we can improve it for our customers and users. When you're speaking to potential candidates to join Science.io, regardless of the, the specific position, many of the, the people you hired so far, as we've seen, are really elite level people. And with that, there's very few of them. And a lot of other companies are trying to hire the same people. What is it that you tell candidates when you're sitting down with them and talking to them about science IO that you emphasize to get them excited about this opportunity over some of the others that they're considering? I think people choose their opportunities with a few different kinds of heuristics. I think the mission of what we're doing to improve the patient experience is really appealing for some people. I think that having a technology forward strategy to do that is appealing for some. I think the passion of the team that we have, we really try to hire people who care because startup life is what it is. And I'm incredibly proud of the team that we have. And I think people really see the energy and the vibrance when we talk about how do we improve what we're doing for our users. I think all of those things are, are really fundamental drivers for the folks who join. Um, being aligned to spending most of your day on making a dent in a system that we are all beholden to that could be doing better for patients. It's, it's massive. We also think really hard about how we can create a very positive work experience where we work in healthcare. So individual health and work-life balance is really important to us as well. It all starts with setting a good example for how we want to see patients being treated. Final question from me then, Gaurav. Coming up on the three-year mark is a great time to reflect on what you've accomplished, but also start to look ahead. And, and with the recent round of funding, it's an incredibly exciting time. 
when you look at 2022 and the years to come, what are you most excited about for the science IO and, and the growth ahead? I'm really excited about making artificial intelligence a core part of how healthcare works. I think we've seen a lot of progress in uh, how healthcare has used artificial intelligence over the last five years. We've seen how algorithms can assist pathologists in making diagnoses, streamline how we find mutations in DNA sequencing data, and help reduce physician burnout with technologies like digital scribes. But I think we're still in the very early days. So, you know, every day I, I think about how there's never been a better time to work in healthcare because we have much better tools and the opportunity to make a measurable impact is still massive. So over the next few years, we are really gonna be laser focused on building artificial intelligence powered products that improve patient experiences in the healthcare system and helping healthcare organizations manage, extract insights from and do more for patients with the data that they are custodians. That's a big, that's a big endeavor. And I think there's a huge opportunity for somebody who's interested in healthcare to learn AI today and people who are very passionate about AI to think about how to create uh, powerful, equitable, and uh, user-friendly systems in healthcare. Absolutely. Gaurav, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate you talking to us about your own background, the origin story behind Science IO. Sounds like a, a, a great time for you guys w- with the reason around the funding and, and what an interest in mission. We wish you and everyone over there at Science IO the best of luck. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, JP. It was a pleasure to chat with you too. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldous Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldous.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.